Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision lecture series. This is lecture 5 and part 4. In this lecture we are going to talk about cameras and optics, how images are formed and uh, the first uh, and the first version of our camera called the pin, pinhole camera. So let's begin. Um, uh, in this lecture, in this in this topic, we are going to cover basically pinhole camera model, uh, perspective projection, as well as some uh, interest, intrinsic and extrinsic uh, camera parameters. You already know what these are. Uh, we have talked about vanishing points and vanishing uh, lines before in our lectures, and they form part of uh, they they are part of perspective projections. We will look into it uh, in the next part of this uh, fifth lecture. But for this. Uh, part we talk about uh, camera models. So the uh, first question that comes to our mind is what's a camera? Uh, <laughs> these days you go to Google and just uh, search right so what does it mean? Camera means uh, a room. A room basically so this is the f oldest uh, available evidence of our, of a camera which is called camera obscura it's, which was essentially a dark room inside a, a building like this on the right and through a, a hole the light was allowed to pass and there was an image plane where this uh, light was being projected and uh, a person could see uh, on this image plane and um, basically uh, but it was a live camera and uh, this is how you, uh, the image was captured from the real, real world. Uh, another application of uh, camera obscura was for uh, tracing so a device like this a pinhole this is essentially a pinhole camera with uh, an additional reflector here m reflector here um, uh, it was used for actually tracing so you could see huge real world uh, images inside this plane and you could easily trace them using a paper and a trace so this is an example given of how uh, you could trace it um uh, going a bit uh, uh, ahead so uh, in order to improve tracing or in order to improve the paintings or the sketches that you make uh, people used to come up with more sophisticated uh, instruments for capturing the real world uh, information so here is a very good example on the left he is a, a painting by johannes uh, Vermeer uh, called the music lesson it's a painting done by uh, this Dutch uh, painter um, in the 17th century and on the right is a documentary film by Tim Jennison. He got curious this um, so uh, Tim Jennison is a graphic uh, uh, graphics artist he creates graphics for movies he has his own company um, he got interested into the paintings by Johannes Vermeer uh, essentially because he observed that these paintings could not have been drawn live and uh, he believed that uh, th so there are certain parts of the painting or the certain aspects of this painting that are um, that are not easily uh, that are not live like they they are uh, they have, have to have been captured via an optical device or something like that um, so he uh, team on the right he set up on a quest to solve this mystery and what he did was um, he created or uh, recreated the painting using the same texture and uh, painting mechanisms um, in this painting in a in a real world uh, room and um, he used the same uh, painting techniques and the lightings and so on and so forth to recreate and then uh, he would capture this uh, image uh, sorry he he essentially recreated um, the painting of uh, Johannes Vermeer um, the idea was to re uh, reverse engineer the process of the painting to uh, recognize or at least uh, do um, uh, an a predictive analysis of what kind of optical device uh, Johannes Vermeer used for uh, capturing this uh, um, for capturing this uh, for creating this painting it's, in, it's it's very interesting if you are uh, interested to know um, certain things about our certain interesting aspects of uh, how our cameras were uh, developed from um, basic uh, uh, pinhole versions. Uh, this is a, a good documentary to watch. These are some examples. So on the left, you can say that 
um, it's a clear example of a very small pinhole camera uh, over a long exposure so it took eight hours for this image to be to generate so in the older cameras you would have long exposure times so that on uh, because we did not have very sensitive uh, films um, you needed to keep uh, these films exposed to the real world uh, the, to the light coming from the real world over a long duration to actually capture something from the image and on the left is the <laughs> photograph of uh, the same um, photograph so what what's uh, what are we doing really when you are when we are talking about cameras is a camera is like a, a filter or it's like a, um, a transformation matrix or maybe it can also be called as a um, metamorphosis of real world into um, into another world on paper kind of so in computer vision usually we uh, essence, uh, we, we call it the transformation or the dimensionality reduction of the 3d world onto a 2d uh, image and we try to uh, preserve all kind of information that is uh, present uh, depending on the kind of uh, um, image capturing mechanism basically the kind of camera that you are using mm, so uh, cameras basically are used for uh, or or can play or can be um, effectively employed for generating certain op optical illusions these days in the media you already know uh, as a as a as an online citizen or a netizen what it is called these days um, that uh, when you don't look at uh, the whole uh, picture of uh, of some uh, incident or um, or something um, or some event um, the media can actually control the kind of information being so shown to you and they, they can trick you or they can create an illusion of the reality whether which, which is not there uh, we are going to discuss that uh, a few things here but we are not going to talk in terms of uh, um, the media uh, the media uh, aspects we are talking going to talk about more in terms of computer vision uh, aspects here for example lakes uh, this lake is in uh, faro island it's um, uh, so this this structure that you can see here uh, is taken from uh, one perspective uh, the camera is able to capture this perspective from one uh, angle and this is the same um, same portion of the uh, the, uh, the same feature this feature is being uh, shown here so when you see these two different uh, structures they are quite uh, they look quite different but um, they are essentially the same here it looks as if it is a very big uh, like a big cliff or something whereas here it's 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 apparent that it is not so big it's just a small cliff uh, over uh, or uh, near the near the ocean uh, another example is the this uh, of a Paris town hall. This is the town hall, the, the lawn in front of the town hall. Here it, it, it appears as if the, there are a couple of people here standing on the top of the sphere. But when we look at it from you know, another angle, um, we see that it's not really that. It's, uh, it's just a different um, perspective of looking at the same uh, image. It's, it's a small park in Paris town hall. Uh, it has been designed in such a way to give uh, uh, an optical illusion to the onlooker if you are looking from a per, uh, particular angle. Another example here, um, this is a simple painting but when you start looking um, closely, when you look closely, you realize that there is this structure here which looks very weird, it's, it looks out of place and it, has, it doesn't have any nice profile or it, the features are not clearly visible. So, after doing a lot of uh, analysis now we could see we can see what it is it's called the memento mori uh, this is it's essentially a skull here which was painted or um, painted in a different angle uh, so what are the questions that we are asking here um, when we think about cameras um, cameras are basically our uh, mechanism to capture a uh, real world and do we want to capture the geometry of the real world do we, we want to preserve them do we want to um, capture as much information there it is so um, what are the questions that we are asking here uh, in this example in this image we see that there are a lot of people playing this um, game of marbles um, 
the questions that we can ask here from this image is can we extract information like uh, how tall is this woman or any other person here um, how high is the camera so what is the camera um, uh, what is the camera coordinates the world coordinates of the camera so uh, because if we know that and if we know how far or one uh, if we know that those kind of information we can infer the other information from the image um, how the camera has been uh, rotated with respect to the world and um, another question interesting question here you can ask is which ball is closer so this is a 2D, 2D image where uh, it, it's uh, we don't have the perception of or we don't have the depth information here with us uh, so just by looking at this image it's difficult to say whether which ball is near um, we can go by the sizes and say this ball is the farthest then this is a bit nearer and this is the nearest but then we already know from uh, different uh, from a prior knowledge like shadows and stuff like that which ball can be or which ball is nearer uh, to the camera um, but it's not easy to calculate this information uh, via vision algorithms um, we know this as humans but uh, we are our aim is to uh, extract this information or this geometrical uh, information from the world So, um, our, our world is basically 3D and um, heavily, uh, heavily um, I images are heavily pervasive in our, um, in our uh, lives and uh, essentially what this, uh, these authors did, for, this is a very good paper in which uh, the authors created a photo collection in three dimension. So you should go and watch this video and then come back to the slide maybe. Uh, I'm not showing the video here because the quality is not so good um, for sharing here. Um, but the three things that the authors have uh, focused on, actually then these are just the three important things uh, in terms of the topics, but they have done a lot more. If you watch the video, you will know. Um, they have a collection of a lot of images across um, a particular landmark uh, taken from different perspectives and they have taken these photos manually as well as for, for certain locations like Prague and for certain locations like um, uh, London or uh, uh, the other uh, there are a couple of other cities like uh, the Great Wall of China as well um, they have just collected the photos from the internet and uh, they have geolocalized those images using the 3d information uh, extracted from the images so there are certain image, um, there are uh, images which which can be matched using feature matching algorithms, which you have already done in exercise two, I hope. And you see that there are a lot of um, uh, correspondences between two images, and then you overlap them, and then you create this uh, um, uh, because when you because if you have created this uh, correspondences between two images, and if you know the camera um, parameters of uh, one image then you can infer that of the sec second image and using this information you can geolocalize uh, the images with respect to one another so you can essentially create a 3d uh, map of photos located in different parts of this uh, landmark so let's say the great wall of china or you, when you locate one um, uh, feature in an image and you uh, find a correspondence of those features in another image geolocated a little ahead or behind or at a different angle and if you are able to uh, calculate the parameters of the camera you can um, localize the two images uh, in the landmark where they are located and you can uh, so this this um, this work is quite interesting in that they are also able to so in the photo collection you can also do a manual annotation and then the algorithm kind of extracts features from that manual annotation and tries to find relevant um, features or, uh, or images which have that kind of um, correspondences in terms of feature space so it's a, it's a good uh, paper uh, which relies on registration matching and cali camera calibration techniques which uh, we are going to study here so let's design a camera um, when you think of it uh, what do you want to do you want to have a capture or uh, uh, a copy of the scene that you're visualizing so is this setup uh, enough so if you have a cam uh, sensor here 
of an object can you faithfully recreate the um, uh, object in on your sensors is it possible do we get a um, good looking um, uh, reasonable image uh, the problem uh, with this setup is that there, there are multiple points in this object which can be mapped in the same point in the uh, on the sensor so it can ruin or it can corrupt the information captured by the sensor so this setup is not the best so we move ahead and we put a barrier and we allow only uh, some rays some incident rays from the real world object to pass through this barrier um, what we are doing here is we are blocking multiple rays to pa uh, pass through this point so at the sensors only uh, um, rays from only one direction are incident and are captured so uh, there is no corruption of the information from multiple uh, by multiple um, points in the uh, real world mapping into the same point on the sensor array so this barrier um, that we came up with has an opening called the aperture and if we now if you if you know cameras if you have worked with cameras you would know that this aperture uh, is a very handy tool by controlling the size of this aperture you can create um, different um, perspectives of the image so Earlier in our uh, course, we also saw an example in um, uh, one of the applications where we, where you can have, um, where we can, where you can zoom the camera and uh, create a toy-like image uh, of the real world, right? So uh, that kind of uh, optical tricks can be achieved using the uh, controlling the size of the aperture. Uh, this is the basic uh, setup of a pinhole camera model. This is what we call. Uh, on the right, you have our real-world image. Uh, this is the camera center or the lens where through which the all, all the light passes. And this is the f is called the focal length. Um, and uh, this is the image plane where you are able to capture the image of the real object. As you can see that uh, the image is captured in the inverse form or in a, an inverted form. Uh, the reason being that because of the pinhole, the rays are only able to travel in one direction. So uh, in the sensor or the image plane, the object appears uh, inverted. More on um, the pinhole camera model. So. Uh, what we are doing here is we are converting um, the real world coordinates into image coordinates, right? So here is the candle. Uh, the real world e coordinates are x, y, z because our real world is uh, three dimensionally is in three dimensional in x, y, z. So y is is this um, dimension. Z is the distance between the camera and the object, and x is the is the depth, which is not visible because we are working with uh, mm, a 2D um, images right now. So uh, essentially X would be, uh, X would uh, go inside this point and it would give you uh, the, the width of this um, candle in the X direction. This is the camera center as we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, this is the focal length, the distance between the camera center as well as the image center. Uh, and um, in the image plane v is the length of the image being formed of the real world object and u is the width uh, of the image um, oh, uh, yeah u is the width of the image uh, in the image uh, in the image plane uh, the object is represented as the vector p of uh, u and v um, so how do you how do we so there is a relationship between all these uh, values so we know z z is the distance uh, of the camera center with the real world object y is the height of the um, candle or the object here f is the focal length and v is the object height in the image plane and u is the width of the image um, of the object in the image plane so uh, the theory is called i think the intersect uh, theory so when there are two uh, intersecting lines, the proportions of the of each lines um, are represented like this. So uh, 
uh, in this equation it's easy to see for example uh, z so v can be uh, recovered or can uh, the height of the object in the image plane can be calculated using this relationship um, usually we all you would have the information of f and z and if we also have the information of y it's uh, easy to calculate the information of v uh, same with um, the u uh, relationship and an uh, interesting question here that would uh, uh, come to our mind is what if uh, f equals to z so what will the if what will this effect have so if f is equals to z then uh, your the real the the height or the dimensions of your real world object is the same in the image plane as well uh, but it will be only v equals to minus y so the reason that we have a negative uh, relationship between these two is because this is the camera center which is the uh, 0 comma 0 comma 0 so um, if you are going on the other side of this uh, um, camera center the negative uh, axis uh, value values start so uh, in order to represent v you will have to use uh, a negative value and therefore uh, we have to enforce a negative value here so that we are able to preserve the actual um, values okay so until now we have seen we saw uh, the basics of a pinhole camera model and now we want to go ahead and look into what uh, effects if uh, if we want to preserve certain aspects of the real world um, what effects will this have on the image capture what things can we preserve and what things we cannot preserve and does it depend on the camera or not and can we formalize this relationship from the real world to the image plane and if we can formalize this relationship into equations or even uh, uh, some uh, analytical framework then we can actually uh, predict or infer information from the real world just by using the image from the real world so we will look into this in the, in the next lecture. Thank you.